Hello students, I am Dr. Aruna Mohan from Delhi University and today in this session we shall discuss about types of muscles. There are three types of muscles majorly, the skeletal muscle, the visceral muscle and the cardiac muscle. The skeletal muscles are found in association with skeletal system that means bones. As we have discussed in earlier sessions also that our skeleton will move and help in locomotion but not without help of muscles. So any bone should be helped by the muscle and those are skeletal muscle. In other words, the skeletal muscles are the muscles which are joined to the bone to provide movement and locomotion. Visceral muscles are found in hollow internal organs to help in the internal movements and cardiac muscle as the name indicates is found only in heart and cardiac muscle has many special features so that it can function throughout our life without taking rest. Let us first discuss about skeletal muscle. If we see it under microscope, it looks striped and hence it is called striped muscle also. And because striations are seen, so sometimes we call it striated muscle as well. So skeletal muscle will be striated or striped, that is one feature. It is voluntary in nature and that is why it is found in locomotory organs which helps in change of position. So for example, if I want to move my hand or my fingers or my thumb, this will be voluntary action on my part and this will be helped by skeletal muscle attached to that bone. Suppose I want to write with pen, then my fingers, my thumb, my hand is involved and all those muscles which are attached to the bones of fingers, wrist or palm are involved in this particular action. So we call them skeletal muscle and they are voluntary in nature which we must remember because these movements are done by us in a voluntary way. Second category of muscles in our body is visceral muscles which are found inside our body in the hollow regions like our alimentary canal, like our reproductive tract. These muscles are smooth in nature that means visceral muscles are smooth and if you see them under microscope they are not striated, they are not striped and that is why we call them unstriated or non-striated and that is the reason why we call them smooth muscles and these muscles are not in our control, they are involuntary in nature. You can very well imagine when you eat the food, it moves forward from mouth to esophagus to stomach to duodenum to small intestine to rectum and then feces goes out. All these movements are taking place automatically. Okay, So it is involuntary. We are not making it move, it is moving on its own. That is the main feature of a smooth muscle that they are involuntary in nature. In this slide you can also see diagram a smooth muscle. I would like to show various features of this. You are not seeing any striations here but you can see so many nuclei. Here I would like to emphasize that the muscle cell is multinucleated which is very very clear in this particular photograph. The nuclei are many and there are some other special features also in case of muscle cell like we have discussed nerve cell which had some special features. Similarly in muscle cell the special feature is that it is multinucleated. Third type of muscle is cardiac muscle. As I have told you it is found only in heart and the heart muscle is very very different 
from other muscles. The cardiac muscle is different from skeletal muscle and from smooth muscle. Of course, if you see it under microscope, it looks striped. So, we can call it a striped muscle, but it is involuntary. Whereas, a skeletal muscle which was striped was voluntary. So, heart muscle is involuntary, that is one point. It is striped, that is at the point. And third, most important point is it is branched. You can see branching in this photograph. One muscle cell is connected to other and other to still other. The purpose of this arrangement is that contraction of muscle moves from one fiber to another, another to another and hence the previous fiber gets time to relax or rest because we know that our heart has to beat throughout. It has no time to rest. The moment heart rests, the person dies, that is heart attack. So, our heart cannot afford to rest. The day baby is born, from the day the child is born up to the day the person survives. The total lifespan of a person, the heart has to continue beating. For that, the heart muscle should have some special features so that either it is not tired or it is getting time to rest. So, this is the branching arrangement which allows previous nerve fiber to relax so that muscle fiber also relaxes and energy moves forward and this arrangement will allow heart to go on beating continuously day after day, year after year. So, this is cardiac muscle. Lot of energy is required for this activity and we know the energy comes through oxygen and glucose and these things will come to any part of the body through blood to heart also through blood. So, our coronary arteries which supply heart muscle, hence the cardiac muscle will do this needful thing of providing oxygen and the glucose. It is interesting to note that heart is full of blood, but the wall of the heart or the cardiac muscle needs good supply of blood from outside so that it is nourished in terms of glucose and oxygen. That is why if coronary arteries are blocked or not functioning properly, then heart will not get food in the form of glucose and oxygen and hence there will be problem at the level of heart. And that is why for coronary arteries, bypass or other surgeries are done. To keep our coronary arteries healthy, the important aspect is we should not allow cholesterol to deposit in our arteries. That will mean we should not take too much of fat in our diet after a certain age. Now, I shall explain you the structure of skeletal muscle. The skeletal muscles are present in the form of bundles and these bundles are called fascicles and these fascicles are held together by ligaments and those are called fascia. Now, within these bundles, there are muscle fibers and muscle fibers have muscle cells. The outer membrane of muscle cell is called sarcolemma and inside plasma is called sarcoplasm. That means the membrane of muscle cell is sarcolemma and cytoplasm of muscle cell is sarcoplasm. You remember in case of nerve cell, I said the cytoplasm of nerve cell is neuroplasm. Similarly, cytoplasm of muscle cell is sarcoplasm. And the important feature is it is multinucleated. There are so many nuclei because muscle cell needs lot of energy and nucleus is the center of functioning of any cell. So, by giving multinucleated appearance to muscle cell, more energy can be given. Children, you must have realized when you walk too much, your legs are aching. 
if you are doing lot of work your hands are paining if you are writing for long time your fingers are paining why this is happening because muscles of those areas are tired that means muscles need more energy to provide this particular cell the muscle cell with more energy more number of nuclei in the muscle cell become very helpful at this point i would like to remind you one more time that our cardiac muscle which is working continuously may also get tired the way your legs are tired when you are walking or your hands are tired when you are working similarly your heart muscle may also get tired if we are not providing food in terms of oxygen and glucose through our coronary arteries coming back to skeletal muscle structures muscle cell has muscle fiber and muscle fiber has very typical structure it has dark bands light bands it has protein like actin myosin and these bands are arranged alternately longitudinally in the muscle fiber and these bands have some special features to perform in the muscle cell i shall now explain a structure of muscle fiber with the help of diagram children in this diagram you can see myofilament which is showing dark and light bands at this point let me explain to you that light bands are made up of a protein called actin and dark bands are made up of another protein called myosin the light bands are also known as i bands whereas dark bands are also known as a bands the light bands are thinner and dark bands are thicker and they are arranged alternately light band then dark band again light band again dark band longitudinally in the muscle fiber because it is going to help it in contraction and relaxation you can see in the diagram the light bands are there dark bands are there and a point called sarcomere is important in these bands the area from one point to another point is called sarcomere and which is a functional part of any muscle fiber when there is contraction in sarcomere the muscle contracts and this is done by filamentous theory which we are going to discuss in the next session but at this point of time the dark band and light band they slide on each other to allow muscle to contract or relax this arrangement is made possible because of presence of sarcomere and a particular kind of protein present in the muscle cell so children you have understood the three types of muscles the skeletal muscle the visceral muscle the cardiac muscle you also know where they are present skeletal muscle in association with skeleton visceral muscle in internal hollow organs and cardiac muscle in the heart and also we understand the voluntary and involuntary nature of muscles and smooth muscles and the striped muscles and also we have seen a structure of a muscle fiber with this we come to the end of this session thank you